Okay, so let's get started on our project. To make this nice and simple, we're going to use just basic things you can find at any craft store. We have acrylic paints. We have a paintbrush, a palette for your different paints that you choose. And of course, my favorite colored pencils because colored pencils are fun and colorful and they will help make our project come to life. And also we'll be using some markers later on in the video. So let's get started. Also, I, I wanna tell you that I got this notebook for under $5. You don't need anything fancy or expensive. We're going to make it look fancy and expensive. All right, to start, we're going to just start with some white. I wanna start with white because white gives us a nice uh, color to paint onto without making um, the color washed out that we wanna actually use. So if we weren't gonna use white, we would have to use a color and it would show up a lot better. So all I'm gonna do is just paint I just know from experience that using white makes an excellent background so that you get that bright, vibrant pop that you want. The reason that I wasn't using this journal just kind of hit me. It's like, I think it's because I don't have a journal that's my journal or my sketchbook. And so when I thought about this project, I thought, well, how can I make it mine? How can I make it uniquely mine? and something that is not just something you can just go buy at the store, something that has its own unique twist. So when I decided to do this, I said, well, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it 100% because nothing else has worked up until now. And I know it's kind of weird, but some artists have like a fear of starting something new or just blank page syndrome. I don't know what it's called. For me, it's like a block. So I said, well, I'm gonna come up with a solution to end that, and that's why I am doing this video. I hope that it inspires anybody that has the same thought. I think they're just afraid to do it. And you know, that is actually a common theme in life, is being afraid to jump into something and start it because you don't know exactly what it is that you're going to do. But you know what? I'm so over that. I don't want my life to be about being afraid to do something perfectly and as a result, never doing anything. I would much rather take a risk and try something than never try anything. Because the truth of the matter is that you can always fix something that you start if you're not completely happy with it. And I always tell myself that you can always start over and always try again. And it's been a journey, you know, figuring out how to make peace with that thought in your head. Like, I just don't know if I'm good enough. I just don't know if I'm capable. Well, the truth is you are capable. You just have to start and you have to believe that you can do it because the first step to doing anything is believing that you can. And I have determined that for myself, that once I finally just let go of all the self-doubt and all of the fear, that things naturally flow. I'm not sure, but I'm probably going to have to do a couple of layers of white on here. Maybe not, because I'm not actually going to make this white. It's just going to be my backdrop for the design. So it might take more than one coat of paint. But I'm not going to worry too much about it because in the end, it's not even going to show. So you can do whatever you want. If you really like that thick coat, do two layers, but I'm just going to do the best I can with one layer of white paint and then take it from there. We'll just start with that and just get like the coating on the edge. I'm not going to worry too much about painting them. Remember, progress over perfection. It's very easy to fall into the trap of wanting to make things perfect, but getting things done is so much more rewarding than mulling over perfectionism. So that's my first tip. Don't be a perfectionist when it comes to art because you'll be never making art. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you'll never make any art. After the paint has dried the first time, we're going to go with our next color. In my case, I'm going to go with a hot pink because I love hot pink. And I'm just gonna put my pink in my tray. And this is a fluorescent pink, so I'm not really sure what's gonna happen with this, but it's gonna really stand out. And we're going to draw a line. And I'm not gonna worry about the line being perfectly straight because a lot of this is going to get covered up in the end. But as you can see with the white behind it, you can tell that the color is really popping off of the sketchbook. So I'm just gonna to continue to paint this. And you don't have to use fluorescent paint. I just, I'm using what I have on hand. I really like to maximize what I have sitting around instead of buying new art supplies. 
Now, if we had painted this without the white under it, there's a good chance it wouldn't have this very bright hot pink color because the white, again, helps the colors pop. Okay, so this is the first color done. And as you can see, it really stands out on that white. So we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna start our next color. We are going to add our blue. I'm gonna use a very light blue that you would see on a teen magazine and use that for my second color. So again, just the same thing. I thought of this idea and it just kind of like hit me. Like this is definitely what I want to do. And then it was the question of how exactly am I going to do this? But we can't get stuck in that place. We have to keep moving forward even though we don't know all the answers. So there are other videos that you might be interested in. Like I have a really cool video that you can check out where I create a collage out of comics. And not only that, but you can use it to decorate your walls. It's a nice inexpensive way to put art on your walls without buying art from the big box store. Because as artists, we want stuff that's unique. We want stuff that expresses how we feel. Okay, so I have the main sketches done for the magazine. Now I will say this was a difficult challenge because I didn't have any preconceived ideas of what I was going to do for the magazine. So the challenge for me was to create it while filming it. And I think the biggest challenge is trying to get in the head of a teenager or how I might've felt when I was this age. If you have any memories that are connected to being a teenager, please drop them in the comments. Um, I would love to know what you're thinking. But I remember a lot of things about being a teenager. So anyway, I have all of these 
sketched out. And the next step is going to be to color them in. And then after I color them in, I'm going to add my titles. So to outline my drawing, I have these liner pens from a brand called Marabou. I'm going to try to pick the one that matches my more natural way of drawing because I have a fairly thin pencil line for a comic artist. I figured out which one I want. I wanted to prove the point that if you decide to do something and you commit to it, even if you have blockage in your mind of how am I going to do this? What am I going to do to be creative? It all starts with one simple idea that can gradually be built upon. So don't get caught up in, is this going to even look good? Because only time will tell. You've got to just sometimes give things time to become what they're supposed to be. So just stay encouraged. And if you decide to do a project like this or whatever kind of project you decide to do, just keep going. Don't quit and you're halfway there. All right, so probably you couldn't see, but I was um, also outlining up at the top here. So I wanted to show you what that looked like um, before I color it in. And then I have one more part to do, which is the title of the magazine. All I have left to do is the title, and for that, I'm going to switch to markers.
right, so we're going to continue our project and we have our book cover here. We have all of our um, elements for the cover of the magazine. To continue the project, we're going to need Mod Pod. I've used this before in another one of my videos. If you want to check that out, go ahead. This one's a satin base. You'll need a pair of scissors and you'll also need a paintbrush. I'm going to take my printed out magazine elements and I'm going to also cut those out. If you're really enjoying my content, I want to invite you to subscribe and like my channel and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting a new video. I am a new channel. If you love art, keep watching my channel. So I've laid out some of the pieces so that I can see how I want it to be done before I even start gluing. I started drawing comics when I was about 11 years old. When I started doing more comics, I made comic books and then I put advertisements in them for different products and things. And one of the things I put in there was uh, joining the Samantha fan club, which of course never existed, but it was always a fun concept to think about it. In doing this channel, I'm hoping to eventually actually start some kind of a club within the channel. Comment below if you think that's a great idea or not, but then you have to remember like nothing is impossible. You can just think it up and make it happen. Some of my friends who watch this channel actually are familiar with my comics from when I made them as a teenager essentially, and I remember giving them quizzes to take. I can't believe I actually did that, but yeah, I gave them quizzes to take based on what was in the comic book, and they were supposed to be able to remember things from the comic books. Like, I'm not sure how that's possible if you're not the creator of the comics, but apparently I thought that everybody was going to be able to do that. And as you can see, the theme of this um, magazine is beauty from the inside out. Basically, it's about not just how you look on the outside, which this modern society has a huge obsession with how you look on the outside to the point where a person doesn't even look like themselves. And I think that's really sad because we should embrace who we are and learn to love ourselves. There's more to life than looking a certain way. It's about how you treat others. It's about how you make people feel. That's the legacy that you'll leave ultimately. That's what I believe. You know what's great about art is that it doesn't have to be perfect. That's not what art is about. It's about allowing yourself to just abandon all that logic for a little while and just do something because you want to. People that put pressure on themselves to do art just perfectly, I don't understand that at all. I came up with an idea to use metallic paint to give the cover just a little bit more glamour and a little bit of shine. So we're gonna use metallic fabric paint. I just wanted to add one more element to the magazine and that would be this limited edition um, sticker, um, which might actually be on a magazine. So I wanted to give it like that official last touch. So that concludes our tutorial on how to make a journal into a magazine. And this is hopefully going to be something that will really help me and maybe some other artists out there who have had just artist block with just creating in general because they couldn't start from square one. So I'm hoping that this has been valuable to you. If you like it, give it a like. And if you want to share it, that'd be great. Subscribe, leave comments, and I hope to see you again. Bye!